Fournette. His first carry. And takes it for about 11. Here's what you missed early in this game. Davius White trying to field a punt. It was dead right there, but four plays later, Treon Harris goes to his tight end for a touchdown. And Florida on the road with a 7 0 lead. Yeah, a gutsy call by Jim McElwain on fourth and less than a yard. Not only going for it, but going with the play action pass with Treon Harris, and it pays off. So one Harris with a touchdown pass. Brandon Harris now for LSU. Cox and Bullard make the stop on Fournette. Well, the key for Florida's defense in defending Leonard Fournette is to try to make him alter his course and change directions in the backfield. The first play of the game, they did not. The second play, they did. What a matchup of strength on strength. The LSU run game, most of which comes out of the eye formation with Leonard Fournette. They're in the eye right now with Mouton, the freshman at fullback. On second down and 11. The pitch to him. Bulls his way across midfield to the 48 yard line to pick up a seven, running up a third down. One of the real questions coming into the game how would the freshman Mouton handle being the starting fullback? Because of how much they like to run out of the eye. J.D. Moore was the starting fullback, was having an outstanding year, hurt his knee early in the game last week against South Carolina. There's J.D. on the sideline. Mouton so far in the first series looks very comfortable as that lead blocker. He's a big guy, 255. Not in there right now, but Fournette is on third and five. They fake it to him. Harris bootleg throws, drops. Traven Durrell probably should have had that. Probably should have had it, but probably would not have had the first down. Florida had it very well defended. This Florida defense excels at rushing the passer and covering down the field. They're not the biggest, most physical defense, but they can really run and cover in the passing game. Jamie Keene into punt. That's Vernon Hargraves, the All-American, back at the 10-yard line. End over end punt. Hargraves has to call for the fair catch and takes it. Just inside the 11 yard line. Treon Harris has been spotted a touchdown lead courtesy of his own touchdown pass. He'll have it when we come back. To this. He was the start of the first game, got replaced in the third game, but to his credit, never stopped preparing like a starter, and he's off to a good beginning. Two for two so far for a touchdown pass, and this is the other thing he does well, and that's run. And he wisely slides just to avoid contact over there, a yard shy of the first down. Yeah, just to follow up on that, and this is great example for any young quarterbacks because competition is a way of life. In, in college football and high school football. He was the starter the first game. He started six games last year. In week three, he was he was beaten out by Will Greer, and he has not attempted a pass since the second game of the year. But to his credit, he never pouted. He never went in the tank. He kept preparing like he was a starter. And once again tonight, he's a starter in a huge game. He's actually started more games than Will Greer has. Here's Powell, tough sledding boy against the LSU defense. It's always the case. They come in giving up 100 yards a game, and Florida comes in giving up 99 yards a game. So they're bing bing in the defensive stats as far as stopping the run. I really thought for both of these quarterbacks, being efficient and effective on first down was going to be huge. So far, Florida doing a nice job with the mixing the run and the pass on first down and giving themselves nice third down opportunities. Third and short this time for Treon Harris. I would think they'd be very conservative right here. Jake McGee, the tight end, gets over on a wing right, and they're just going to give it off and hope that Taylor can get to the sticks, and I think he got it. He did. First down, Florida. He does a nice job of making quick cuts, quick cuts when he sees a little crease. He's had a very nice season so far. Bothered a little bit by an ankle injury early in the week. Already seven rushing touchdowns for Kelvin on the year. Coming off a two touchdown performance in the win over Missouri a week ago. Brandon Powell now will take his spot in the backfield. As we said, they move Powell all over the place. Well, one of the reasons Powell's in there is the two guys behind Taylor are both true freshmen. Good players, but young. 
Harris, plenty of time. Completes it to Powell out of the backfield. Short gain. Let's take a look at the AP Top Ten rankings brought to you by Chick-fil-A. Ohio State playing a little bit later. Already Baylor went over West Virginia today. TCU, Iowa State are tied. You look down the list, Alabama went over Texas A&M. 41-23, so that takes Texas A&M out of being undefeated in SEC play. So the only two SEC teams we've got left that haven't had a blemish on their record are playing right here. Three wide outs, and Taylor behind Treon Harris, second down to nine. LSU is going to blitz, and it pays off. Kendall back with the middle linebacker with a hit and a loss on the play. Sometimes you blitz to get after the quarterback. Other times you blitz when you anticipate run. That's what this is. Here's back with it's a run blitz anticipating run and you shoot a gap. You beat a block and you get a play behind the line of scrimmage. Back with their leading tackler a big play there to force a third and long. This is where Treon Harris has to be very smart and very careful with the football. Harris on the rollout, on the run, and he throws a strike to Powell. First down, Florida. Boy, well done. Changing the launch point of where the quarterback is. Powell was in the slot. It was a flood route. There were three receivers to the right side. They move Harris out of the pocket, utilizing his mobility and a nice, accurate throw on the move. That quiets the crowd. Here at Tiger Stadium, first down for the Gators at the 35, leading by a touchdown. And we approach the four-minute mark of the first quarter, and Treon's perfect. See, again, look what Florida's doing formation. They've got two tight ends. They start them both in the backfield. Now they move Goolsby up, just trying to create some confusion. Nice play fake. Harris wants to go deep down the middle and incomplete. And Jamal Adams almost had an interception on that one. So that's the first incompletion for Treon Harris. Hey, we've got an NFC East battle in week six on Monday Night Football, 8-15 Eastern on ESPN. Eli Manning taking on DeMarco Murray and the Eagles. Coverage starts with Monday Night Countdown at 6 and also streaming live on Watch ESPN. A second down and 10 upcoming. So if you go back to the first game of the season and the opening 11 minutes of this game, that's the first incompletion in a first half for Treon Harris this year. Not bad. <laughs> There's a nice throw and catch again to Powell. Powell's a tough matchup. Yeah. Well, he's tough for a couple reasons. One, he's he's powerfully built. He was a former running back, so he has excellent after the catch skills when he catches the ball in space. Still kind of learning the nuances of being a receiver, but when you get him the ball quickly in space, he can be very difficult to bring to the ground. We saw what he could do against Ole Miss and a long touchdown in that game. And again, another manageable third down situation where Treon Harris as a runner is another threat that LSU has to be aware of. Three of those 19 catches for Brandon Powell have come in this first quarter. And whistle, and they stop play. And Florida, I think, took a timeout. Yep. First charge, timeout, Florida. Timeout. Jim McElwain takes a timeout, and we'll take a timeout as well. 3.16 remaining first ESPN College Football is presented by Hilton.com, where you can book unbeatable prices on 12 unbeatable hotel brands. And in part by Buick, proud partner of the NCAA. Mike, the Tigers not with us tonight. Mike's been a little bit shy about being at the stadium. They can't force him to come over here to the game if he doesn't want to. And quite frankly, if I lived in the habitat he right. lived in, I'd stay over there and watch the game on yeah. TV, you know? It's just not as intimidating by not having him on the sideline over by where the visitors come out of their locker room. It's one of the great scenes in college football and Mike decided to stay over by his crib tonight. I wonder if he has a flat screen TV. I know he does. About a 60 inch over there. Third and three. They've converted half their third downs here in the first quarter. Have to rush with discipline with a guy like Harris. 
Trion, there you go. Just what Todd's talking about. They track him down a yard shy, and it's Lewis Neal again, who's got a sack tonight. And now it appears he stopped Trion Harris short of the first down. Well, this time I think McElwain will punt. You know, in this part of the field, on the road, don't do anything to incite this crowd or to give LSU's offense a short field. Your defense has played outstanding all season. Don't put him in a tough spot here early in the ball game. Trey Davey as White goes back deep. Remember, he muffed a punt earlier if you're just joining us. That was recovered by Florida at the 13-yard line, and that led to their touchdown. This kick high, a spiral, and he fields this one cleanly on a fair catch after a 44-yard kick. LSU with the ball back on offense when we come back. He is on the sidelines with a left knee injury. So in his place, Brykeithen Mooton. He is a true freshman getting his first start tonight. I talked to Brykeithen before the game, and he said, you know, it's been really cool. My teammates have had my back. They've been pumping me up all week. He said, I feel like I've got this. We watched him at practice Thursday. He knew his assignments. He was confident in his blocking. And most importantly, Leonard Fournette has a ton of confidence in him. He says, I feel like he's going to be just fine tonight. You know, Holly, a big part of being a good fullback is wanting to be a fullback. And, and, and Mouton has that. I mean, it takes a different mindset to want to play fullback because you're going to be smashing your face into people pretty much every play. He's the up man with Fournette on a play action throw complete to the tight end Dylan Gordon and he's short of the first down but and he's still down well they just got Gordon back and he's he's kind of a valuable piece to their offensive puzzle because he's a 300 pound tight end so they use him in short yardage and goal line situations as a blocker and that time threw the football to him on a nice first down play action pass. Hopefully he just landed on the football or something. It's hard to tell. No, oh, they're working on his leg already. He's been out since the Auburn game with an Achilles injury, and it looks like they're looking at the potentially the same thing. Mm -hmm. Well, we got a break here. Let's check in on the studio. Adnan Burke. Adnan. And that thanks Dylan Gordon coming off under his own power to a certain degree. Yeah. He is a huge tight end at over 300 pounds. And uh, yeah, he's still, it looks like it might be the same injury as Todd just said. We'll, we'll try to check on him. In the meantime, it's second down and two. And here's a toss to Leonard Fournette. And Leonard in the open down to the 30. And he lost the ball. Florida, did they have enough sideline to work with to pick it up? Vernon nope. Hargraves is the guy who ripped the football out. And, and coming into the game, LSU one of the best in the country at taking care of the football. And Cam Cameron, the offensive coordinator, said this team, Florida, they really try to take the football away from you inside the 30-yard line. And we're going to be extra careful in what we do. And Leonard Fournette had We're both hands on the, on the ball. The ball was fumbled by number seven. It went backwards and was touched while out of bounds by a player. Therefore, it's a fumble out of bounds. The ball be put at the spot. Third down. Of course, that view, we lose the sideline yeah. because of the players being there. Brian Cox Jr. Correct. is the guy First who's down. recovering the football. Hargraves rips it out. Brian Cox, number 94, is a guy who's going to fall on it, but was he out of bounds when he recovered the football? There's the best look we have right now. Oh, man. I'm not sure. Bill Lamagne is our man up in the booth with us. Bill, what do you think? Well, it doesn't matter here. They're going to snap the ball. <laughs> that looked really close to me. 
I, yeah, I'm surprised I, okay. that they didn't. They look finally at that. got it. It took a second right, to here. get the call down from the, the booth. The previous play is under further review. Now see if if I'd have been Brandon Harris, I'd have had a quick count there. You're not I wouldn't have let them have any chance if they were going to review that right away because there looks like there's some green in between his fingers and that chalk and that football. That's about the best you're going to see, and he scooped it back underneath yeah. him. Cam Cameron said. There have been four teams that Florida has played that have given them the game by turning the ball over inside the 30 yard line. And he said we are going to be somewhat conservative in our pass protection and some of the things we do until we get out past the 30 to take care of the ball. Bill it's a game of centimeters. It sure was on this one. I mean we've got a great shot there uh, splitting hairs but it looks like there's some green between yeah. the ball and that sideline. Replay's got that same view, high def equipment there. They have a good opportunity to reverse this call, which I think would be the correct thing. What a tremendous effort by Brian Cox to pull the ball back into the field of play. I mean, he could have very easily knocked it out. He could have tried to recover on top of it and been out of bounds. Very instinctively pulled it back into the field of play before recovering. Pretty nice play by Hargraves to rip it yeah. away from a 235 pound guy as well. Here's Brian Cox Jr. We saw him with a. Uh, Fumble recovery a couple weeks ago against Old Miss. Great body control by the big guy. Vernon Hargraves, 5'11, 199 pounds, ripped that ball out. And again, Leonard Fournette had two arms protecting the football. Hargraves, the team leader with three interceptions, a big play defensive back. Might have just created another big play for the Gators. So we wait on the guys in the booth. Gerald Hodges is our replay official. There's a lot of statistics that aren't worth a whole lot <laughs> in, in college or pro football. But one that seems to stand the test of time is turnovers yeah. and turnover margin coming into the game. Florida plus eight LSU was plus six. But right now this looks like it may be a minus two for LSU in the ballgame early on that plus eight for Florida's tops in the SEC. And Matt Leffler on the headsets. And they are taking a very close look at this, obviously, because it would be Florida's ball back inside the 35 yard line. We'll give you one more look and we'll bring Bill in one more time. Bill is another angle, actually. Yeah, and, and you know, the thing that we have to watch for, too, is I, I think he's got the ball before, or he pulls the ball back before it touches the sideline. But the key thing is he's got to possess it before he hits down and out yeah. of bounds. If he hits down out of bounds before he's controlled that football, then it's still going to be a fumble out of bounds because he didn't possess it. It's tight. Yeah. So it's 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 sort of like completing the catch if you're a wide receiver. Only in this case, a defensive player having control of the football. And, and that's what the ruling was that he was out of bounds when he recovered. Is that? Yeah, here we go. They said the, the ball was out. The field is confirmed. Clock operator, please reset the game clock to 145. 145 on the game clock, please. So it's confirmed. Thank well, you. that's a break for LSU. I You're mean, that, you know, this this game could have turned very quickly because of turnovers, and it's exactly what Cam Cameron talked about with us yesterday. That that you cannot do that with this team. That Florida has made a living all season. They've won close ball games, and uh, and a big part of that has been their ability to rip the ball out or intercept it in critical parts of the field. It'll be interesting now to see if LSU just settles in. They've made a number of mistakes here in the first 13 and a half minutes. Darrell Williams actually is in the backfield instead of Leonard Burnett right now. Brandon Harris with three wide receivers will give it to Williams straight ahead and nice leg drive for about three yards as we check in with Holly. LSU will be without their starting tight end. Dylan Gordon for the rest of the game. He has re-aggravated that left Achilles injury. Guys are really consoling him on the sidelines over here. Guys, that leaves Colin Jeter, number 81, out there. They're a little thin at this position, so don't be surprised if you see to Toby Weathersby, number 66, strap on a 96 jersey. We could see him in some goal line action. All right, Holly, thanks. That's a tough break for Dylan. And there is Colin Jeter, number 81. He's in the slot to the left side on second down and six. Harris pumps once, fires, nice throw, completes. Trayvon Durrell on a first down LSU. Well, really good pass protection from LSU. It allowed Brandon Harris to really kind of sit in the pocket, read the defense, watch this protection up front. 
Brandon Harris, lots of time, read from left to right, and able to find the crossing route in the middle of the field. Draven Durrell, that's his 15th catch of the year, which will put him in the top spot. He and Malachi Dupree were tied coming in with 14 catches each. And LSU not used to being behind. And the end of the quarter is almost upon us. Play action all day for Harris. Deep got his man again. Traven Durrell again. And LSU using their passing game to carve up Florida. Another gain, this time 20 yards. Well, they put Durrell in motion across the formation. They isolated the coverage and then the deep crossing route off the play action. Good design. And again, two plays in a row. Excellent pass protection That's for Brandon Harris quarter. to make a throw. End of one in Death Valley and the home team down a touchdown. LSU with a couple of nice pass plays. From Brandon Harris to Traven Durrell have put themselves in a spot here at the 33 yard line with a first down to start the quarter. After their first scoreless quarter of the year again they fake it to Fernand and Harris comes up firing this time he had Durrell open again and missed him. Well good pressure from Alex McAllister number 14. McAllister had a nice ball game in Gainesville against LSU last year had a sack and a half. This time he makes quick pressure off the edge and gets a good hit on the quarterback at the end of the play for good measure. Yeah, that changed the trajectory of your pass a little bit. Again, first down so critical for both of these offenses. That incompletion second and ten against this very good Florida defense. Back to the eye they go with Fournette. He's been held to 26 yards so far through the first quarter, but that won't last forever. And here he comes into the middle and at Florida tough defense only gave him about three and he's still not down he is now but it's back around midfield and the Tiger fans don't like that much. Well any great defense like Florida is I mean they, they're going to get particularly amped up to go against a guy like Leonard Fournette. I mean Fournette the front runner by most people's estimation of the Heisman Trophy averaging over 200 yards a game running rough shot over everybody. And this is a defense that has a lot of pride. They've done a great job in their run defense every game this year except one. The Tennessee game, they did not tackle well, and they gave up 254 yards of rushing. So this is an extra special challenge for them as a defense. LSU's going to take a timeout here. Trying to take advantage of being in Florida territory. First with a third timeout. down and eight upcoming. LSU. We'll take the timeout as well. A minute into the second quarter, 7-0 Florida. A staple in the Florida offense for Tim Tebow in those days. That jump pass helped number five Florida beat number nine LSU 23 to 10 back in 2006. This is a 62nd meeting between these SEC rivals. Les Miles is one and three against Florida when the Gators are ranked in the top 10, but the one he won was in 2007 when they won the national championship. Third down and eight. For Brandon Harris, plenty of time over the middle. Got his man inside the 20. Draven Durrell again. Pick up a 15 and a first down. Well, nice job again by the LSU offensive line. Florida trying to run a little stunt, showing blitz, then dropping out. Good protection and another crossing route for Durrell. That was a heck of a throw right yep. there. That's Brandon the Harris. only spot that one could be. And there's the red zone offense for LSU this year. Florida one of the best in the country at not giving up touchdowns in the red zone. Wow did Bullard get a big jump but it didn't matter Fournette got the corner and he bowls his way to first and goal at the five. Yeah Jonathan Bullard very quick off the ball anticipated the snap count watch him get across the line of scrimmage but the play was run away from him. The fullback 
Mouton got a little piece of him, and Leonard Fournette did the rest. Fournette got 12. First and goal inside the five. In the eye. Remember now, they're missing their big blocking tight end. So this tight end over here is not as physical as Dylan Gordon. They give it to Fournette. Takes the pile with him inside the three. Brings up second down and goal. Mentioned Florida's defense in the red zone. This is the 16th possession, but they've only given up five touchdowns. So they have done an excellent job of making you settle for field goal attempts when you get in this part of the field. Toby Weathers being an extra blocker and there's Holly told us will be in now he's this particular as, yeah. formation on the left side. Yep, He's lined up as a tight end on the left. He's Leonard, right here. Leonard Fournette's in a wildcat. Harris came off the field. Fournette with 12 rushing touchdowns on the year tied for best in the country. He's heading to the outside for number 13. Touchdown LSU. I thought he got away with a little movement before the snap. Florida guessing inside run and they just kind of gave the corner to him. You see that little hitch with his left foot before the ball was snapped but no call and Fournette easily walks into the end zone for the touchdown. Didn't have to work that hard for that one. The extra point by Domang is up and good. And just like that, Leonard Fournette with his 13th touchdown rushing of the year. This time the direct snap. The Wild Tiger cruising in 7-7 here in Baton Rouge. Cameron Gamble to kick. First SEC player to hit a thousand in his first five games. And had they played that first game of the season, he probably would have done it in four games. That one was a no contest. This is a fumbled ball by Powell, but he got back on top of it around the 15 yard line. As we check in with Adnan. I didn't see that before because we were just getting ready to come on the air. That's unbelievable. Here we're tied at seven. Best in the East, best in the West in the SEC on ESPN and a first down for the Gators. On the first quarter, they did a great job on first down. They had six first down plays and four of them gained four yards or more. Calvin Taylor, this one won't get four. He's lucky if he got one. Deion Jones was the first guy that submarined in there, number 45. Bring up second down and nine. Center Cameron Dillard a little bit slow getting up at the end of that play as well, number 54. Florida's first down play selection. They probably surprised LSU a little bit with allowing Treon Harris to let her rip. Yeah. All safe stuff, though. It was bootleg. It was get him out on the edge and give him a run pass option. And he made good choices out there. Empty backfield. Could be quarterback draw here, second and ten. He's in trouble. That was a whistle, apparently. I didn't see it. I think Jim it. McElwain may have called timeout. Harris was in conversation. Before the snap. Timeout. Florida. Yeah. Tell you what, if you want to hear a whistle in this building, you better be standing next to the official that's got it in his mouth. 11:29 <laughs> to go, first half. We're tied. Florida Gators with their first-year head coach Jim McElwain, perfect at 6-0, and we're still dead even between the East and the West. 7-7. 11:29 remaining in the first half. Empty set again for Treon Harris. Now they move McGee in the tight end. Harris in trouble and after a timeout that's not much of a play yeah. to Sean Bauer 
made the stop. Deshaun Bowers been out of the lineup, been hurt since the Syracuse game with an ankle injury. This is his first game back. Outstanding defensive end, gets good pressure. Working on the left tackle, David Sharp, and just whipped him to the inside to get to the quarterback. I don't care who you are at Tiger Stadium, you don't want to be third and 10 at your own 15. Florida's had pretty good situations on third down until this one right here. About a three yard gain to Demarcus Robinson and Florida's got a kick. So this should give LSU great field position. If Trey Davius White can handle the punt on the other end, which he didn't do in the first quarter. And that led to the Florida touchdown. I think if they get good field position too, I wouldn't be surprised to see LSU go play action and take a shot for a big play down the field right away on first down. Behind Townsend is kick a good one again. White's got to back up all the way to the 28 yard line. Made one man miss, two miss, and goes down at the 33. Good punt though. 53 yard punt. Time for the LSU offense to go back to work, and that means number seven. We mentioned 10th running back in FBS history to rush for 1,000 yards in the first five games. First player in SEC history with three straight 200 plus. He's working on his eighth straight 100 yard rushing game, which would be one shy of the school record. And as Todd said, he is uh, everybody's first team everything, including the leading candidate probably for the Heisman Trophy. And we can start to talk about that now. We don't like doing that in August, but uh, after watching him through the first five weeks of the season, it's kind of hard to keep from thinking that. Well, he has the potential to turn any run into a long touchdown. And you saw that tied for first in touchdowns with 12. That was coming into tonight. He's already got one tonight. Here's the play action. Todd said they wanted to take a shot, but he has to come back to his secondary receiver. And that's Doral, who's run out of bounds after a short gain. Holly. Well, Leonard Fournette's not only doing it on the field, but he showed us last week he has a great big heart. After that win over South Carolina, he pulled out a laminated statement that he typed out on his computer. His buddy Earl from the strength and conditioning staff had laminated for him, and it had it in his shoulder pads right under his chest where his heart is the whole game. He read the speech on national TV, and basically he wanted to to auction off his jersey and have those proceeds go to those people who had been in the flood. The NCAA has approved it. There is some paperwork pending, but how sweet is that? He said, I remember going through Katrina, what that felt like. I want to help however I can. Well, his family had to go through that, and they were living out there on a bridge for a few days like a lot of people were, so he knows what it's about. And here he comes and almost a face mask at the end of that play. I guess he just got up high. Antonio Morrison, Leonard Cerise arranging his face mask, however, after that run. Again, the key is to try to make him change directions in the backfield, which Florida was able to do. Now, Fournette is such a good back, he was still able to get upfield. That's a clean tackle, yep. even though it looked like it could have been a face mask, but he had him up around the top of the helmet. So it'll bring up third down and short. And you would assume we might see Leonard again here. The pitch to him. Here comes a big one, maybe. Fournette rumbles down to the 33-yard line. 25 yards later. Well, they come out of the huddle. They get lined up quickly. They snap it quick. And Mouton, the freshman fullback, watch number 47 on the lead block, gets the key block, and Fournette cuts right inside of that and turns a third and one into a big play. Again, when he gets those shoulders going straight towards the line of scrimmage, look out. He takes a breather. Darius Geis comes in at tailback, and he's not too shabby either. He had more yards a week ago than Leonard did. Number five, the tailback. He'll get his first touch. Oh, he got whacked in the hole after about a two-yard play by Jonathan Bullard. Bullard talking this week about playing Fournette, and he said, you know, we got a really good defense, and I think we can handle him. It was sort of taken out of context on Twitter and all of that. Jonathan's the guy that knows how good Fournette is. Said he's yeah. the best back in the SEC and the best back in the country. We just hope we can slow him down, and I think we can because our defense is that good. And we got a man down. It is the left guard, I think. Yep. Tahuma. Tahuma. 
Looks like possibly a cramp because he put his leg up in the air right away. 8-15 remaining in the half tie game. on the sideline. Toby Weathersby taking his place at right guard. Second down and eight. Harris has a look. Fournette readjusts in the backfield. And it's going to be Harris keeping it this time. Nice run. See, LSU's not done a lot of zone read stuff, but they knew coming into the game that we've got to do some things to offset the speed and the upfield rush of this Florida defense. Florida shifted their defense when the formation changed, anticipating Fournette was running to the right side of the offense. And Harris did a nice job pulling that football and running it and setting up a, a very short third down situation. No doubt the money down for the Florida defense right here. A stop would force a field goal, maybe. Les might go for it. This might be two down territory anyway. Third down and a yard at the 24. Right guard move again. So it's going to be third and six instead. And that changes things. Weathersby in the game for Tahuma. False start. Offense, number 66, five yard penalty. Third down. Well, he's played a lot of different spots so far tonight. For a guy on the offensive line. It's a big difference. You know, third and one to third and six against one of the best defenses in college football right now coming into the game. There's Jeff Collins, the defensive coordinator for Florida. <laughs> Mouton and Fournette. Both in the backfield. Make it Darrell Williams and Fournette both in the backfield. Craven Durrell has been the favorite target for Harris tonight. Third down and six throws in the middle to Fournette's got a blocker. Leonard Fournette broke a tackle spins inside the 15 and it's first down LSU. Well a nice little change up play. A design little middle screen to Fournette. They lead with the other back and watch the little sidearm delivery from Brandon Harris. Well designed well set up. And an easy throw for the quarterback. He doesn't have a lot of pass receptions, but he's got really good hands out of the backfield. I was watching him before the game, catching half the passes thrown to him one-handed, so it's not like he can't catch it. He's just so good at running with it, and he'll probably run with it again. First and 10 at the 14. He will get the call. Broke a tackle close to the 10 before they stop him. I made the point about Leonard Fournette. I mean, he's had some incredible highlight type runs but last week when South Carolina came in here they actually did a nice job defending him in the first half they held him in check and the second play of the third quarter it was a second and seven from their own 13 yard line and he busted through and ran 87 for a touchdown and it kind of opened up the floodgates in the ball game but he is he is one missed tackle away from a touchdown Williams in there for him right now and Williams gets the carry a tough couple of yards against the Florida defense. Williams actually had two touchdowns last week and that went over the Gamecocks as well. So all three backs got in the act because Fournette had 158. I mentioned Geis actually had a better game 161 and then Williams averaged over six a pop including two touchdowns. So they've got a loaded backfield. Yeah. Seems like it's always the case down here but they continue to reload and have not just one not just two but three or four good tailbacks. In this case, three wideouts up top on third and five. Harris looking that way, fires to the corner, got it! Malachi Dupree for the touchdown! He was working on Quincy Wilson. And at the right of your screen, you're going to see Quincy Wilson take a bad angle. He undercuts the route, thinking the ball is underthrown. And it was a perfectly thrown by Brandt, ball thrown by Brandon Harris to the back pylon to Malachi Dupree.
Extra point is good. And for the first time tonight, the home team in front with exactly five minutes remaining. In the half, Brandon Harris, Malachi Dupree on the other end. 14-7 Tigers. You're watching the Dr. Pepper Championship Drive Game of the Week. Number six LSU leads number eight Florida by a touchdown. After trailing 7-0 early, 14 unanswered for LSU, courtesy of Brandon Harris and his fifth touchdown pass of the year. You know, the more I watched that play during the commercial, the better I liked it. He threw his receiver open. He did a beautiful job with a touch pass of throwing it in the right spot and letting his receiver adjust to the football. Camp Cameron was telling us yesterday he had one speed a year ago and that was throwing fastballs every yeah. time and now he's got some touch and that one couldn't have been thrown any better. And the reason you want touch it improves the receiver's vision and it allows him to get his hands in a stronger position to catch the football. Powell's going to bring it out from about five yards deep. And a nice return out to the 24 yard line as we check in with that Nanberg again. Uh -huh. All right, Adnan, thank We'll see you in a little less than five minutes. Glenn Davis in the house. Big baby, former LSU star here at Hoops. They've got their incoming freshman star in the building as well tonight, Ben Simmons. And if you haven't seen him, you'll see him on Super Tuesdays this year with Sean Farnham and I. It's Harris on a throw, and a good one it is. Complete Antonio Callaway, the freshman. Nope, they're going to say he's out of bounds. Thought he made the catch. It's a tough throw. For Treon Harris, he was running, throwing to the sideline, and he kind of lofted it, put a lot of air under it. Callaway not able to get his foot in bounds, only needs one. Take a look at this again. Close. At that point, I don't know if you know if he still has full possession of the football. They're not going to stop it here, so it's second down and ten. Trion completes it to his tight end who got hammered after he made the catch by Kevin Tolliver. Boy, they think a lot of this yeah. kid. He's going to be maybe the next great one at corner for the Tigers of LSU. Has a very interesting disposition. He, he's a very serious guy. He doesn't say very much and he doesn't get affected by very many things. Very focused young man as a true freshman playing a, a corner. He got affected a little bit by yeah. that tackle, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Third down and four. Demarcus Robinson up to the top. He and Callaway have a little conversation as they'll stack it over there on the left side. And there's some confusion. I think Florida might have yeah. to use their last time out. And that'll get the crowd going. Third and final charge timeout. Florida. That's a 30 second timeout. So 30 second timeout and that's it for the Gators as far as stopping the clock other than moving the chains or getting it out of bounds. Now you get your NFL Sunday going tomorrow the insiders edition week six with injury news fantasy updates and early breaking stories at 10 a.m. Eastern then at 11 Sunday NFL countdown with Boomer and the guys all starts 10 o'clock tomorrow morning on ESPN as we check in with Holly Rowe. Well, guys, Florida is struggling to communicate on that last play. It is so loud in this end of the stadium. This is where all the students are. It's pretty loud and rowdy down here. Got the decibel meter out. So far, 105 is the loudest I've seen. The loudest we've had this year was at Tennessee, that Oklahoma-Tennessee overtime game. So it's pretty loud in Death Valley. Not as loud as we've heard this year, though. They're going to load up for the Gators here on third down and four. They back out of the blitz look still there's pressure on Harris and down he goes and Lewis Neal with his fifth sack of the year. 
One of our impact players, and he's had a whale of a first half. Treon Harris does not look real comfortable in the drop back pass situation. Watch how quickly he tries to get out of the pocket. Instead of stepping up in the pocket and helping his right tackle, he tries to escape. And that allows Lua or Neal to get away from the tackle and get the sack. 13 yard loss. That changes field position considerably. White's trying to get everybody out of the way here, so nobody touches this punt that's going to die down at the 41, maybe the 42 yard line. So good field position for LSU, and they've got a touchdown lead with 315 remaining in the quarter. Celebrating its 11th year sponsoring the Good Hands Field Goal, Nets all state makes contributions to participating universities' general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kicked. To date, all state has contributed millions in scholarship funds. And coming into the ball game, LSU very run heavy in their play selection. Much better balance tonight, and Brandon Harris making it count. They've run 24 plays, still 15 runs, but nine passes, and Brandon Harris has completed seven of them. There's the breakdown rushing to passing this year. And you're the number one rushing team in the SEC, averaging almost 350, and a guy like this, that's why you run the ball, breaking tackles is four net. He's bulldogged out of bounds after a five or six yard pickup, but it looked like he was going to lose yardage and he still got something out of it. Well, there's two flags down. There was one in the blocking area and then there was one at the point of the tackle by the LSU sidelines. Could be offsetting penalties. Here's a call from Matt Leffler. There are fouls against both teams, holding 66 on the offense, personal foul, face mask, defense, number 42. Those penalties will decline. First down. Well, that's second penalty on Weathersby, who had to come in for the injured Tahuma, playing right guard. And then Keanu Neal is going to get the face mask right there. He did have the right hand. His left hand was around the top of the back of his helmet, but he got his. There's the hold right there. Got his right hand underneath on Leonard Fournette before he flew out of bounds. So it's first down at the 42. The toss to Fournette, and it's a flea flicker. Back to Harris, going long. Dupree has got it. What great execution. This is a one man route. There's nobody else out on the route except Dupree. Maximum protection. Fournette takes it all the way into the line of scrimmage. And it's one on one against the best defender on the Florida defense, Vernon Hargraves. And a beautiful throw by Brandon Harris. 52 yards to the six, works first and goal. Huge play here late in the second quarter. And that's Fournette. At the tailback spot going straight ahead. Leonard Fournette, touchdown. A big play leads to an inevitable play. Number seven for six yards and a score. Well, he just runs right through arm tackles. I mean, <laughs> you better get more than one blue jersey around him if you want to get him to the ground. Took less than a minute for LSU to take control of this game. Just impressed with the development and the maturity of Brandon Harris. I mean, everybody knows about Fournette, but the key to this team really going places this year is the development of their passing game to complement Fournette and their young quarterback, Brandon Harris. And he has gotten better and better each week and more of a vocal leader each week, more confident with his role on this team. It helped to have the opportunity to play South Carolina last week when it looked like they could take care of the Gamecocks even though they fought hard. He had career highs, 18 completions and 28 attempts for 228 yards. You couple that with what he's done in the yeah. first half, and I'm with you, partner. Uh, he's coming of age a little bit. Let's check in with Holly. Well, Todd, as you mentioned, the biggest thing that's changed about Brandon Harris is just 
just his confidence level. I spoke to him at practice on Thursday, and he said because he was locked in a quarterback battle with Anthony Jennings early in the season, he didn't really feel like he was in a position to say much. He said now that the job has become his, this team has become his. He said, I feel like the guys look forward to hearing from me. I try to talk to them every week. I'm communicating. I feel so confident in this team. They are my team, and we're seeing surely that confidence tonight. He just saw it there with our shots on the sideline. He had a word for just about everybody on his offense, and he's still working it over there. He came up to me in the training room on Thursday, came over, shook my hand, introduced himself. We had a nice conversation. Very confident, sure young man. I was very impressed. Cameron Gamble to kick. 21 unanswered. LSU points. He'll line drive this one. Scooped up around the 12-yard line by Valdez Showers. And great coverage, which has not been a strong suit for LSU. And they make the hit on it. Leonard Fournette just kind of an average first half, huh? Well, he, <laughs> he doesn't need much, you know, and, and, and some of those runs don't look like they're exciting runs, but they gain positive yardage, and they also take their toll on a defense. He this was his away. biggest one of the night, 25 yards of the 84 on 12 carries. Nice reception here on that little sidearm pass from Harris, too. And then, of course, the cappers first in the Wildcat goes in on his own that one capped off for 58 yard drive and just two plays after the flea flicker and it's 21 to 7 just like that now Treon Harris running out of trouble and he gets a first down see that's what I think he needs to do instead of trying to escape outside on this LSU defense if he's going to run move up in the pocket and look to run straight ahead that's been their best first down play in a while in a while they started off the game very effective on first down but before that play their last four first down plays had netted them only two yards as we hit two minutes in the half remember Florida's used all of their timeouts already Harris avoided a big hit and got a couple yards before he's run out of bounds Of course, LSU operating this year with a new defensive coordinator, Kevin Steele, replaced John Chavis, who moved on to Texas A&M. Kevin Steele spent time on the Alabama staff, the Clemson defensive coordinator. There's Kevin on the left. In fact, he and Jim McElwain were on the Alabama staff together. They had their lockers next right next yeah. to each other. <laughs> Used to sit next to each other in the press box. Very familiar with one another. Sometimes good friends have to put it aside for about three and a half hours on a weekend. Harris again avoids the rush and he's going long and he's got a man. Did he make the catch? Wow. Callaway did. Bobbled it, tipped it to himself, and a huge play for Florida. Great concentration by Callaway and a bad angle by Ricky Jefferson. Watch the safety number 29 go underneath the receiver. An excellent concentration by Callaway at the end of the play. Wow. Nice catch. Freshman out of Miami. A guy they think is going to be a big timer. That was a big time play. Pick up of 48 yards. Florida's back in the red zone. Trailing by two touchdowns. They fake it to Taylor. And Harris goes to the end zone to the tight end Jake McGee. Just like that, Florida cuts it to seven with the extra point coming up. Just about to say Jake McGee's been quiet. They run a wheel route, and they just kind of let him go. McGee is right here. He's going to run a little wheel route and up. They cover the outside part of the route, but nobody covers the upfield portion, and Treon Harris does a nice job of finding him. The defensive end, Arden Key, a true freshman, number 49, looks like he might have been responsible for the coverage. Didn't stay with it. Remember, George Powell went out with an injured leg, so Austin Harden, the backup kicker, in for the extra point. And no problem adding on the 14th points. Quick drive, 44 seconds. 80 yards in four plays. The big one was Harris to Callaway to get him to the 19. And Jake McGee did the rest. 21-14 LSU. Happy they didn't have any timeouts to work with. Yeah. They took it down the field without any timeouts. 
cut it down to a seven point advantage and we've only got 94 seconds left in the second quarter. Uh, it was a very important drive not just to stay within striking distance on the road with a new starting quarterback but also LSU won the toss and deferred so they're going to get the ball to start the third quarter. You didn't want to let them have an opportunity to really capitalize and, and put this game in a very difficult spot for Florida. So a huge touchdown drive for the Gators. So Austin Harden to kick. Nick Rosette and Darius Geis are back inside the five yard line for LSU. Line drive is going to go to the end zone. Geis can't handle it. They'll bring it out to the 25. Let's take a look at tonight's good hands plays brought to you by. Allstate and this one not only a good hands play but that might make make uh, sports centers top ten the scramble and then find an Antonio Callaway and watch this grab tips it with his right hand bobbles it gets it gets his feet in bounds and the next play they threw the touchdown pass to McGee so that was huge yeah Callaway was the the star of the comeback win at home against Tennessee when they were down 13 in the fourth quarter. On a fourth and 13 play, he turned it into a 60 some yard touchdown that was the game winner. And Doug Musmeyer has told us, Doug Musmeyer, the offensive coordinator for Florida, said, We've really pushed the envelope for this kid because we think he's going to be special. They put a lot on his plate for a freshman. Leonard Fournette, another tough run, might end up with a hundred before halftime, depending on how long we go before. This quarter expires, but there was a flag on the play. Offside on the defense, on the nose guard, that's a five yard penalty. We'll replay first down. Now he's a guy that's not supposed to be offside. The ball's right in front of you. Now, one of the things that the LSU coaches tell us about Leonard Fournette that makes him special, there's a lot of things, obviously, just physical skill set. But his durability and the amount of volume that he's able to carry not just in games but even in practice the reps that he can take the endurance and the strength that he has uh, pretty outstanding for this young sophomore. First and five he'll get the call again and he's going to have a first down at the 35 yard line. Again LSU's got two timeouts remaining. When you have a back like Leonard Fournette, as physical as he runs the football, I mean, in the third and fourth quarter, you, you get tired of coming up to tackle a guy yeah, like exactly. that. Exactly. And if he's fresh and strong at the end of the game, he has the advantage. He's got the advantage on this one. Bulls his way for 13 more yards. I'm not sure how many Gators he left in his wake, but there were three or four. Nice job just kind of reading the zone blocking falling in on the backside there and waiting for an opportunity to burst eighth straight game of 100 plus now I said he's going to have 100 by halftime if they keep feeding him to it he just lost a couple yards but he's still got 100 I think and 37 seconds 35 now they are finally going to call a timeout here the unique thing you can do with him ledger when you watch these guys is you can run on passing downs and then you can pass when you feel yeah, like second it. charge timeout LSU. I mean third down and six doesn't mean anything right. to these guys necessarily. Yeah again that's why first down is so important you have to be efficient on first down and to gain at least four yards if you can. If you get negative plays on first down it can kind of take Fournette out of some things. Brandon Harris is eight out of ten for 135 yards and a touchdown tonight and he might be put in the air after this timeout and after Arizona State and Utah play when we're done keep it locked in for Sports Center at night for a full breakdown of the day in college football plus highlights and postgame coverage from the Jays and the Royals and the Cubs and the Mets Sports Center at night that's after Arizona State and Utah on ESPN number one priority get the ball and then number two priority don't drop the ball. Well, that's been the uh, the M.O. of this Florida defense so far this season is getting the football, forcing turnovers. Geis comes in, Fournette goes out. On second down and 13. Here's a wide out screen to Dupree, broke one tackle and then got hammered at the 49 yard line by Brian Poole. 
Very talented secondary on this Final Florida defense. Timeout, LSU. That's a 30-second timeout. So LSU takes its final timeout. If you're talking about field goal for Trent Domaine and LSU, his longest and career long was this year, a 45-yarder. So they need to get some more yardage here on a fast play or two. Uh, third down and nine right now. Brad Nessler, Ty Blackley, Charlie Rowe. Boy, that drive by Florida. Yeah. That was huge. Huge. Very <laughs> much so. I mean, they had to keep within one touchdown. Yeah. You know, we got Treon Harris. He's playing pretty well, but LSU's defense was starting to kind of squeeze him a little bit. They got the big play to Callaway and then uh, the nice throw on the touchdown to uh, to McGee. So really a, an important drive for him as they get ready to head towards, towards the locker room. Here. They're down to nine upcoming now. The ball just shaded on the LSU side of midfield, and there is... Trent Domain. He's seven out of seven on field goals with the long 45 yarder. So nice to you know, still need to make up some ground here for him in the final 27 seconds. Brandon Harris wanted to go long, I think, and this is the last thing you want to do is get sacked. He didn't, and he will throw deep. And it's caught by Dupree. Touchdown. Talk about making something out of nothing. A 50-yard touchdown pass. Well, Jordan Sherritt, number 17, had a shot in the backfield on Brandon Harris. And Brandon Harris avoided that and then made the big play down the field. Domang doesn't have to worry about a field goal attempt. He can just hit the extra point, which is up and good. This was all Brandon Harris. Watch Brandon Harris get away from the pressure. Right there, and he protects the ball, and once he gets outside, he gets his eyes back downfield and finds Dupree. And the defender on the other end had just gotten turned completely around. The safety, Marcus May, got twisted around, lost vision on the football. And Dupree not only turns After it into a big play, over. but a touchdown. Unsportsmanlike conduct, number 57 on Florida. That's a 15-yard penalty. That's number 57's first of the game. So the penalty as well goes against Florida. That's Brantley, Caleb Brantley. But Malachi Dupree with two touchdown catches in this half. Brandon Harris has been spot on with his throws, including his... Todd said there he made that one happen yeah. and you can see the smile on his face see, we've had uh, there's his numbers in the last uh, tonight and last week against South Carolina and that last throw is is a throw that only a very confident quarterback makes I mean you're kind of taking a shot throwing it downfield the guy's not really open but you're trusting that your guy's going to make a play which Malachi Dupree did and it turns into a touchdown but only a confident quarterback goes ahead and makes this throw. He gets away from two rushers, keeps his poise, and gives his guy a chance to make a play at the end. In the last three minutes, I don't know if you're having fun, but in the last <laughs> three minutes, we've had three touchdowns yeah. scored. 28-14. And unless something really crazy happens, it looks like LSU will have a two-touchdown lead going to the locker room and the ball to start the third quarter. But still 15 seconds left. Maybe Brandon Powell will take one coast to coast here. I don't think they're going to try to give him an opportunity. Well, he won't get an opportunity out of the back of the end zone. So no timeouts for Florida. NFC's battle coming up on Monday Night Football for you. Week six. Start at 8.15 Eastern on ESPN. Eli Manning leads the first place G-Man against DeMarco Murray and the Eagles. Coverage starts with Monday Night Countdown at 6 Eastern. Also streaming live on Watch ESPN. Boy, a couple minutes ago we were talking about that touchdown drive of Florida. You know, and keeping it a seven-point game, knowing LSU was going to get the ball to start the third quarter. And all of a sudden, it's a 14-point lead again. Treon Harris will give it off. Calvin Taylor just a safe play. And the last play 
of the half. Battle of unbeatens. Entertaining football game. Could have been a touchdown closer, but some big fireworks late in the quarter has given LSU a two-score lead heading to their locker room as we send it to the Buick Halftime Report. Adnan and the guys standing by. Fellas. as we get set to go into the third quarter. Welcome back to Death Valley, everybody. Brad Nussler with Ty Blackledge. Partner, if you told me you know, that 304 yards yeah. total, I would say Leonard Fournette had 200 of it, and maybe they got 100 passing. Yeah. That wasn't the case. Brandon Harris was sharp. He was very sharp. Excellent balance. And remember, this is a Florida defense that has been holding all their opponents to write about that for a whole game. So excellent balance. Mixing the run and pass. Kept the Florida defense off balance. Averaged almost 10 yards per play. So it was not just Leonard Fournette. Good passing game as well. Fournette still had his 100, so who knows? Maybe he's on pace for 200 again. They're going to get the football first to start the third quarter. And back deep, Darrell Williams and Darius Geis. That last touchdown to Dupree really got this place rocking as LSU went to the locker room with that halftime lead. Remember, Florida's first touchdown was set up by the turnover on the special teams. And there was another play in the first half that looked like it was going to be a turnover. That Florida recovered a fumble. It, it was overruled or actually ruled that he was out of bounds when he recovered it. So LSU maintained possession. That's what Florida needs to try to make happen here in the second half. They've been great at forcing turnovers. They need to do that to kind of shorten the field for their offense here in the second half. I think the play clock is having some issues right now, apparently. That's what they're trying to straighten out. Only had 25 minutes at halftime to make sure that thing worked. Austin Harden has got it teed up again. He's the backup kicker had that starting job as a kicker earlier in the year. George Powell was injured on kick coverage. There's a problem with the 25 second 40 second to play clock. Therefore it will be kept on the field by the back judge. All right we'll keep you abreast as best we can. So Harden's going to kick off and Williams and Geis wait back on the other end for LSU. Geis with the big game last week. You look at the back of his jersey. My friend Mac back in Georgia says, you know, when you look at that name, it looks like it says juice. And we agreed he's got some serious juice when he gets his hand on the ball, but it is Geis. Yeah. And uh, the true freshman out of right here in Baton Rouge, man, they, they don't like get backs. They get them from right here in town. It's unbelievable. Now, Les Miles said about that one, Geis, that the, fir the term reckless abandon was made for him. <laughs> he loves contact. He searches out contact when he runs the football. Very aggressive young ball carrier. What the officials have done wisely is to go to both sidelines and tell the respective quarterbacks where they should look for how much time's left. Because if you can't look at the clock in the other end zone when you're going that way, you're really in kind of a blind spot. So. I think they've got that all straightened out. Matt Leffler says let's play ball in the third quarter. Both teams came in in the top 10. Fifth time in the last 10 years. Both are in the top 10 when getting together. And it's huge right now with Alabama having beaten Texas A&M today. So whoever wins this second half is going to be the only undefeated Southeastern Conference team. And Geis is going to take a knee. Just a moment ago, Jim McElwain talked with Holly Rowe. Well, Coach, coming into this game, LSU was almost 3-1 to one run to pass ratio, but they're hurting tonight in the pass game. How do you adjust to that? Doing a heck of a, they're doing a heck of a job on first and ten. You know, they're getting us in that. Those situations because and their quarterback playing great and uh, you know give them all the credit for that. But you know when you look at it I mean is it really about them or is it about us you know we've been hurting ourselves in a lot of things and and yet uh, we'll see what happens in the second half. What do you have to stop hurting yourself in. Well I think first and foremost it's about understand the guy next to you is going to do his job you do your job. 
That's really what it's all about. All right, and quickly, Treon, how's he doing? You know what? He's doing okay. Uh, he's, he's having fun out there. We've had some signal busts. Had to use some timeouts, so we can't use this app. But same time, he's he's confident. The guys are confident. Let's go out and play. Thank you. Thanks. First snap of the third quarter offensively for LSU, a flag down. Yeah, and it's probably going to set him back. You know, Jim McElwain made a great point about how effective LSU was on first down in that first half. Holding offense, number 64, 10 yard penalty, replay, first down. William Clapp, the right guard. When you play a defense like Florida's, who loves to penetrate the line of scrimmage and create negative plays, you have to stay ahead of the chains. And that's what LSU did the entire first half. And now the first play, they're backed up. The experience is the tackles in the center for LSU. But the two guards, one's a true freshman, one's a redshirt freshman. Right. And the redshirt freshman was just called for the hold. And that makes it first down at 20. Fournette, the tailback behind Mouton. We'll get the call and his fullbacks in front and Leonard's got about uh, the holding call back. Give him 10. Really nice job by the right tackle Vidal Alexander. Watch number 74 step out and then punch back in with his left hand. He actually blocks two Gator defenders. Alexander was a guard last year moved out to tackle lost about 25 pounds. And Fournette changes direction. He's going to lose yardage. On the previous carry, he had moved into the top 10 all time in LSU rushing history. He just moved out with that call. <laughs> He'll get it back, I'm pretty sure. It's a big play right here for the Florida defense. Right out of the gate to start the third quarter, you get the penalty, you get a negative play there. Now you got them in third and long. LSU was five for six on third downs in the first half, mostly because they had all manageable situations. Five for six tonight, but this is a big one. Third down at 14. Williams and Fournette both with Harris in the backfield. Brandon, plenty of time. Deep middle. Incomplete, broken up, intended for DRS. And Florida is going to force a punt. Well, I liked what LSU did, though, on that third and long. They had two backs in the backfield. They kept both of them in to help protect the quarterback. They both chipped on the outside rushers, and that gave the quarterback, Brandon Harris, plenty of time, just not able to make the connection with the yards. So that holding call was the killer because yep. now it's fourth down at 15, punting inside their own 10, and they should get decent field position, they being the Gators. Antonio Callaway is the punt return man. Short kick. And it's going to bounce near the sideline and finally go out of bounds. Ended up getting a decent roll out of it, but it's out at the 34 yard line. Enter the other Harris, a quarterback. Treon coming back out. Again, I think when Treon is in a drop back pass situation, he needs to hang in there a little bit longer and look to step up and move up in the pocket instead of escaping outside. Now, if it's a bootleg or something that's designed to get him on the perimeter, that's different. His biggest play was that scramble. And he threw as he was going to his left down to Antonio Callaway. That got him down to the 19 yard line. And then he hit his tight end McGee on the next play for a touchdown. So those two plays were huge late in the second quarter. Let's see if they can gear it up to start the third. Calvin Taylor. And Taylor, one of his better runs yeah. of the night. Really nice block on the outside by the freshman receiver, Callaway. Antonio Callaway, 198 pounder freshman out of Miami. Blocking on the perimeter, watching the left side of your screen, you're going to see 81. Lock his man up, keeps his hands inside, and Kelvin Taylor does a nice job of just cutting off of that block. And right off the number one on the back of his jersey on that block and got eight yards, second down and two. Now the tight ends both come in from being wide. Now they're in tight, and it's Callaway moving around. Fake it to Taylor, and good read. Nice job by not trying to throw that into any traffic and Treon Harris picks up the first down on the run. See this was a designed bootleg which ideally you get him out on the perimeter but it was a good upfield rush and Harris made a nice read cutting inside the block of his tight end Goolsby and turning it into a first down run. So first down at the 47 opening possession 
Offensively the third quarter for the Gators who trail by two scores. Well, the guy who has been absent for Florida tonight, Demarcus Robinson is their big play receiver an explosive guy out here on the edge. He's been very silent so far for the Gators Got one catch. Again play action. He's looking that way and going that way and wide open is Goolsby. And Goolsby's inside the 25. He got loose back there in the secondary. Well, two defenders went with Demarcus Robinson, and nobody picked up Goolsby coming out of the backfield. Here's Goolsby. He's going to run out to the outside. Two defenders are going with Demarcus Robinson on the inside post route. The corner and the safety were thinking what you were thinking. And meanwhile, the tight end gets it all the way down inside the 25. Nice read by Treon Harris finding the uncovered guy. 30 yard pass play. First down Gators at the Tiger 23. Powell in motion. And now sets up in the slot. There goes Neal again over Harris. That's his second sack of the night. Flag down. And he had Taylor right out quickly. If he throws it right away to the back, Kelvin Taylor makes a good play. On the offense, more than four in the backfield. That penalty will be declined. Second down. Watch as this play unfolds. Kelvin Taylor is going to drop over here. And Treon Harris is looking downfield. If he dumps it right now to the back, Kelvin Taylor makes that a positive gain. Would have come back because of the illegal formation, but can't hold the ball that long in that situation. Lewis Neal was one of our impact players defensively. He's made an impact for LSU tonight. Another sack and an eight yard loss. And second down and 18. Treon Harris Step straight up. up the middle. Broke one tackle. Nice run inside the 20, and he's going to get a first down or very close. He's about a yard shy. See that, that's the point I was making about Treon Harris. He's such a gifted runner. Step up in the pocket. Keep your eyes downfield, and then if you have to run, run up through the middle because that LSU defense is chasing receivers. Instead of trying to get outside the defense, go up underneath them. And how about that move in the open field? Yeah. <laughs> Again, Florida, as they've done a couple times earlier, bring in Brian Cox Jr. and CC Jefferson, normally defensive lineman, as extra offensive push. Third down and one. Calvin Taylor. Oh man, he ran into a wall. Where number 52, Kendall Beckwith, didn't get it. It's all about leverage and short yardage plays. Nice job on the inside by Godshaw, number 57. He took up a couple blocks and enabled the linebacker Beckwith to come over the top to make the play. They've only missed one third down or fourth down conversion this year. They're going to go for it again. Fourth and a yard. Harris gives it off to Scarlett heading to the corner. He's got the first and a bunch more. First and goal for the Gators. Jordan Scarlett, the freshman, gets 11 yards. Well, how about that for a uh, blocker out in front that's a defensive lineman? Brian Cox Jr. doing a nice job leading the play from the fullback position and springs the tailback for a first down. First and goal at the three. Try to make it a one score game. Florida's opening drive of the third quarter is taking them to the eighth play in 63 yards. Knocking on the LSU door. Good spot here. Play action bootleg. Treon Harris. It's Neal chasing him again. Throws at the last second and throws it away. Yep. Good well, discipline by LSU's defense. Anticipating play action pass. I thought Florida might go with that, but LSU was not fooled. Stayed right in coverage. Treon Harris did the right thing, throwing that away. Number 92's been a pest if you're a Florida yeah. offensive player, isn't he? <laughs> Good ball game for Lewis Neal, the junior out of Wilson, North Carolina. Second down a goal. Kelvin Taylor has come back in at tailback. He gets the pitch. 
Got a yard, maybe a yard and a half. It's third and goal. Florida tried to do the same thing LSU did to them. Come up, line up quickly, snap it quickly. A lot of extra bodies on the right side of the formation, but LSU's defense got down, got set, and got good underneath leverage on the football. You think Jim is thinking two down territory down here. He's got a backup kicker. Yeah. He's trying to get momentum against 102,000 screaming against him. They might go for it if they don't get it here. Third down and goal. Jake McGee, the tight ends in the backfield, and now will empty over to the left side. Kelvin Taylor, he's trying to get a block for him. Taylor cuts it in. Touchdown, Gators. How about Brian Cox Jr., though? A defensive end leading the play as a fullback. This is an athletic guy. Watch him get his block. McGee gets a block. But a defensive lineman lined up as the fullback and gets the key block that Kelvin Taylor cuts up inside for the touchdown. And Ricky Jefferson, the safety, is wondering if he can get a license plate number on Brian <laughs> Cox Jr. He got it right in the chin. Extra point. Up and good. How about Florida's defense first holding LSU's offense on their first series, getting the ball back after the punt, taking it 10 plays and 66 yards. Kelvin Taylor, for the eighth time this year, finds the end zone. It's a one-score game. Without having to look to the officials. You know what? They just ran out of time to kick the ball. What are, what are the odds of that? We got the clock fixed. Wow. Delay a game <laughs> on the kicking team. Five yard penalty. Re kick. I was just watching that because I was talking about it. I thought they might want to kick this right now. Yeah, Jim says, why don't we hurry? It doesn't take that long to tee it up. So they back up five. Austin Harden will put it back down. And as soon as they hand him the football, he'll have 25 more seconds. There's George Powell, who's in street clothes now. Again, injured his leg, uh, kick coverage, and uh, didn't hit anybody. Just sort of landed funny trying to help out on a tackle. So it's going to be Austin Harden's job by default, if nothing else. Okay, Austin, you got 12 more seconds to kick this thing. There we go. And Geis will sail over his head, bring it out to the 25. We'll send it out to Ed Denver. All right, Adnan, thanks. Our AP Top Ten rankings brought to you by Chick-fil-A. Of course, Ohio State, the one Adnan's talking about with a 14-3 lead. Baylor and West Virginia had a shootout. Baylor usually gets the best of those and puts 62 up again. And right here, Florida trailing LSU in a battle of top tens. Geis, the tailback in the eye right now for the Tigers as they work from their own 25-yard line. And he gets a call. Got about three. Alex McAllister made the stop. Guys, SEC freshman of the week for his performance a week ago. 16 carries, 161 yards, so 10 yards a pop, and a touchdown in the win over South Carolina. One of the things we wondered about tonight was the LSU offensive line. You mentioned the two youngsters at the guard position. And one of the real strengths of this Florida defense is their inside tackles, particularly Jonathan Bullard, number 90. The young guys have held their own okay. They've, they've done well against this defensive front. Play action pass on second and six. A pump fake and a long ball. And incomplete. Hargraves actually had a better shot at that than Traven Durall did. It's a really good cover corner, yeah. number one. Well, he's he's got the skill set. He's got the confidence. 
He's got the swagger that it takes to play. And they put those guys on islands quite a bit within yep. this defense. And uh, Vernon Hargraves kind of likes that situation. Three wide outs and two backs. The last time they had this, it was a max protection, as Todd said, as they kept those guys in to block for Brandon Harris. See what they do this time. Trouble coming. Harris gets out of it, but he's not going to get the first down. Run down by Jordan Sherritt before he can get there, and it's a punting situation where we check in with Holly. Well, Todd, you talked about that defensive front for Florida. Tonight is the seventh different starting combination that Florida has used up front. I talked with co-defense coordinator Randy Shannon before the game. I said, why are you switching things up so much? He said, it's all about competition. Whoever practices the best leading up to that week, that's who starts on the front. He said, this is also their prowler package. These are the best four pass rushers. They've used it in specialty situations, but tonight they all started the game. Randy, a former head coach at Miami. Short punt, a good roll for LSU, but still decent field position for the Gators. They couldn't have asked for a better opening right. of this third quarter. They forced a punt. They got it down for a touchdown to cut it to seven. They've got it back the third quarter. They've seen Florida score a touchdown to cut it to seven, and now the Gators have got it back. And it starts with their defense. Back-to-back -back stops the first two possessions, and their offense with the ball again. Harris play fake bootleg. Here comes Neal again. <laughs> Treon Harris is going to have nightmares about number 92 yeah. tonight. Every time he turns around, that guy's in his face. You know, and again, playing with excellent discipline. Maintaining leverage on Harris, not allowing him to get outside. See how he attacked the outside shoulder and forces Treon Harris to throw that football away. Been a staple of LSU over the years. Not only big guys on the defensive line, but they can run. It's not like Treon Harris is a slow quarterback. Right. Second down and 10 from just outside the 27. Calvin Taylor behind Treon in the pistol, and he'll get the carry, and he'll get dropped in his tracks by Tashawn Bauer. Well, one end on one side of the play, and the other end on the other play. <laughs> Bauer is right here. Here's the other defensive end gets penetration across the line of scrimmage. S nice spin move in between the tackle and guard and into the backfield. He missed the game last week against South Carolina, banged up a little bit, and tonight he's doing the banging. A loss of five. It's third and 15. They've had short yardage on third down. They got a whole bunch here. Middle screen to Taylor. Can he outrun everybody though? And he might after all. He got hit forward by the defender I think and he might have a first down. Looks like it. Good call third and long. And then good open field running by Kelvin Taylor. Set up well by Treon. And then watch the open field running. Breaking a couple tackles, spinning towards that first down, and then reaching the ball at the end and getting the yardage. And it was Kevin Tolliver, the freshman corner, who at the last second hit him and popped him forward for the one more yard he needed. It's first and ten. Cronkwright's in the backfield now for the Gators. He's going to get a carry on the inside and lose a yard. I think they're going to call the receiver, Antonio Callaway, for starting up field. Too soon. He was coming in motion towards the line of scrimmage. And I think he took a step forward too soon. A little motion on the offense. Number 81 was going toward the line of scrimmage. That's a five yard penalty. Yeah, but it's not the CFL, Antonio. Yeah. So they're not helping their cause on this drive, either loss of yardage or by penalty loss of yardage, putting them in long yardage situations, first and 15 now. As the clock works its way under five minutes in the third quarter. Crockwright stays in there. Treon Harris in the shotgun, and that's McGee on the move, the tight end. The throw intended for McGee, and he somehow stole it away from the defender. I thought it was going to be intercepted. 
Deion Jones had his hand on it. I think Jake just said, I'm taking this thing. Yeah, I think Deion Jones thought it was going to be intercepted, too. Ball was a little bit behind Jake McGee, but McGee just reached the hands back and snatched it out of the air. Heck of a play by the tight end who has a touchdown tonight. Pickup of 10. Makes second down a little better for him. Second and six. Taylor back in there, a tailback, and he'll get the carry. Maybe two. So it'll be third down, but third and short now. You know, we haven't talked much since the beginning of the game about what they missed with Will Greer, who was the starting quarterback. His throwing the ball down the field. The wide receivers maybe not in, as much involved in this pass offense as they have been the last few games. Treon Harris working the middle of the field pretty well, though. Big third down here for the LSU defense. Likewise for the Gators to try to keep the drive alive. Harris too high for Powell. He had him. Powell does a nice job of sitting down on the logo. He read zone coverage and sat down and tried to give his quarterback a good target. The ball just kind of sailed out of the hands of Treon Harris on that third down throw. Well, they didn't hurt themselves field position wise, at least if this punts like some of the earlier ones, Townsend should be able to pin Trey Davius White back inside the 20 somewhere. And again, it is a high kick and a fair catch taken at the 14 yard line. So nice kick. Leonard Fournette and company see what they can do when we come back. Tiger Stadium where the number six Tigers are out in front. Time for our Aflac trivia question. Who are the only three college football players to average 200 plus rush yards per game for an entire season? The reason we ask that is because Leonard Fournette is on pace to do that. Right now he's only halfway there. Been kind of a quiet night. It's amazing that you can say 17 carries for 106 yards and two touchdowns is quiet. But you never know. They're at the 15 yard line. He's always one play away from making it 85 yards the other way. He's a single setback right here on first down. Fournette spins his way out to the 23 yard line. And his first touchdown tonight, he just cruised in the end zone on the Wildcat. And speaking of, Tom Cruise in the house tonight. It's a big game. Wow. It's not Mission Impossible to beat these guys, though. You know, oh. LSU, <laughs> tough at home. At night, it's almost impossible under Les Miles. 47 and 4, Les is at night in Death Valley. Second half possessions, though, they've had two three and outs after going four touchdowns and four possessions to end the first half. Let's see if they can get a first down here without punting. Second down and three. Fournette's going to lose yardage. Nice play. First guy there was Jared Davis, and then Brian Cox cleaned up. Third down coming up, but let's check in with Adnan right now. <laughs> From one Death Valley to the other. Third down and five coming up. Well, Davis made that last play. I'll tell you, these two linebackers, Davis and Morrison, 40 and 3 for Florida, have been very, very active. Right there. Will they have to punt again? Darrell Williams will let us know the stiff arm, and they will. Boy, Florida's defense this third quarter has just shut things down. Well, again, coming into the game, statistically, one of the best in the country. Only allowing 296 yards per game, 16th best in the country. They gave up over 300 in the first half on a lot of nice run pass balance for LSU. But so far in the second half, a different looking Florida defense. So Jamie Keene's got to kick it again. Antonio Callaway waits down there on the other end in the middle of your screen. Nice kick. Calloway's got a back pedal to the 28, slips a little bit, and now comes forward. Antonio Calloway at midfield. He might take it. Calloway to try to tie the game. Touchdown.
touchdown. What a quarter for the Florida Gators. We're coming into the game, LSU, the worst rated team in college football in punt return defense, giving up an average of 23 yards per punt return. That one devastating here in the third quarter. You don't like to see triple digits in that right hand column. There's a whole nope. bunch of triple digits and it just got worse. And that punt return one is the worst it could be. 72 yards. And I said to tie the game. You got to hit the extra point first. I understand that. But Austin Harden to try to tie the game with a minute four remaining in the third. Up and good. The freshman who they say we keep pressing the envelope with this kid to see how much he can do. He just did a whole bunch of damage if you're an LSU fan. 72 yards streaming down the sideline has tied the game at 28. Dr. Pepper Championship Drive Game of the Week, and what a game it has become, courtesy of Florida putting up 14 in the third quarter, and the third quarter is almost over. The last six came from that young guy on a 72-yard punt return. Well, it was a long punt, but not particularly high, and that gave Callaway a chance to, to field it and make something happen. And, uh, you know, whenever you have a return like that, it, it's a combination of a couple guys not blocking in the back, passing up an opportunity, and then a couple other guys getting a block. And then your returner needs to make one guy miss, and that was uh, well done by the Florida punt return team. His previous long this year as a punt returner was a 37-yarder. He was averaging about nine and a half yards a return. But that one has struck the hearts of LSU fans to tie this game. And now Harden's kick is going to be deep again and not returnable. To bring it out to the 25 in a tie game. Here's another look. Again, watch. There's a couple guys early that are going to pass on not blocking in the back. And then there were two key blocks. And then Callaway just used his speed to outrun the punter. Excellent job by the Florida special teams. And his quarterback, <laughs> Treon Harris, watching as it happens. And going, that's making my job a lot easier. Yep. <laughs> I remember this game last year went down to the wire, decided in the last three seconds on a game winning field goal. We're headed to a, uh, a fantastic fourth quarter finish in this one as well. LSU up to the line in a hurry. Quick pitch, Fournette. For that nice spin move and empowers his way for close to eight. Yeah, I think you just keep feeding him for a while. They kind of got away from their eye formation a little bit, went more one back. And that was a Keanu Neal tackle away from being maybe a touchdown run. That's Keanu bringing him down. Second down, a short three. Fournette, first down, a bunch more, 45 midfield before he's run out of bounds. He's the best player on your football team. The game is in the balance. Keep giving him the football. 18-yard pickup. Gerald Hawkins, a nice job blocking from his left tackle position. And what this will do is this will set up an opportunity for a play-action pass, maybe one of those deep crossing routes like they hit Doral earlier in the ball game. I don't think LSU wants to run another play before the end of the third quarter. And the third quarter does come to a close. Brandon Harris, number seven, Leonard Fournette, Tigers, Gators, tie game, 15 more to play, hang around. Flat trivia question. The only three college football players to average 200 plus rushing yards a game for a whole season. I only knew one of these guys. I knew Barry Sanders had to be one. 
Almost 239 a game. Marcus Allen and Ed Marinero. How about that from Cornell? We start the fourth quarter tied at 28. Speaking of 200 plus yards per game, under four nets, not going to get much on that carry. Nope, they made him change directions in the backfield. Again, that's the key to defending him. It was the same if you tried to defend Herschel Walker or Bo Jackson because of how fast and powerful they were. If they got their shoulders square to the line of scrimmage and hit that line of scrimmage at full speed, it was going to be positive gains. If you get them to turn their shoulders at the line of scrimmage, then you can get them on the ground. Three wide receivers set here on second down and 10. Fournette stays in the backfield as Brandon Harris is in the shotgun. Now shifts to his left. They fake it to him, and Harris is going to keep it himself, trying to get to the edge. Got three or four and got whacked out of bounds. No flag. Or is there one? Yes, there is. It rolled in there late in the bottom of the pile. Going to have a personal foul. It wasn't a hard, heavy hit, but it was definitely in the white area. Good read. There is they no read foul for a late hit. Out of bounds. And they're going to pick it up. Yeah, I mean, he tried to hold up. It was Keenu Neal, number 42. I think it was worse looking because Brandon slipped yeah. right there on yep. the sideline. I think you're right. I think it's a good no call. I'm glad they picked that up. It's good hustle. It was a good read by Brandon Harris to keep the football and bring up a manageable third down situation. Again, two backs in the backfield. They've been keeping these two guys in to help chip on the outside rush. They also had that middle screen that they used in the first half. And LSU's got to take a timeout here. Crucial third down. First charge timeout. LSU. They have to get it just inside the 40 yard line for a first down. And we'll see what they have come up with when we come back to take too kindly to that. With Ty Blackledge and Holly Rowe, Brad Nessler with you in a tie game in the fourth quarter at Tiger Stadium. And a huge third down here for both teams. Harris, quick slant, got his man, and it's Traven Durrell again. He's been his main target, pick up a 14. Nice job. They motioned one of the backs out of the backfield. That loosened things up, and then the slot receiver, Doral, ran the little slant. Good timing and good accurate throw by Brandon Harris. Fifth catch of the night for number 83. Keeps the drive going at the 31-yard line. Now you can give the ball back to number seven. They run up to the line in a hurry again, and here comes number seven on the pitch. Wow, that looked like it was going to be a right. one-yard game. See, it just... That, that doesn't look like much, but it's a four, four and a half yard gain, and you got guys bouncing off of him as he's running the football. I mean, that's a that's a five yard gain that looked like should have been a zero game. Yep. Fournette with 139 on 23 carries. Again, he has not broken a long one yet. His longest was 25. Second down and six at the 27. Trying to regain the lead. Here comes the big cat again. And there goes the big cat again. Out at the 15, first down. Make it the 13 before they knock him out. Well, he had 140 yards against the Gators last year as a freshman. And at that time, it was a career high. He's had better games this year. The yards are harder to come by tonight, but he is still running strong here in the fourth quarter. You know, he's the kind of guy, Brad, also, that if you're a lineman or a tight end or a wide receiver, you want to stay on that block a little longer because you know he's capable of getting it in the end zone. We said to the Doll Alexander yesterday what it's like to block for this guy, and he said, all I can go by is the crowd making noise, and that they're really loud. I knew he did something good because I'm usually blocking, and I don't have a chance until we watch the film to see how he did it. Geis is going to come in and give Leonard a breather. Florida's defense has been good, but tonight, different story. When they get down there, and two of those touchdowns, remember, were Fournette, one in a Wildcat situation, and one on a handoff. 
But in this case, Geis is in as the tailback. Here's the fade to the corner. And any flags? Jalen Tabor, they say no. Malachi Dupree was thinking yes. Well, pretty good coverage by Tabor. This is kind of a 50-50 ball. Both guys have a chance, one-on-one, -on -one, corner on an island. Yep. Yeah, a little bit of a hand fight at the end, but not much. It's a one-person route. Good maximum protection, trying to go one-on-one. -on -one. The ball was thrown a little bit inside. Had the ball been thrown over the outside shoulder a little bit more, a better chance of success. Malachi Dupree, five for 115 and a couple of touchdowns. Play action. Here's the throw to the tight end, and he got drilled at the 17-yard line. And it was Keanu Neal, a guy that his coach, Jeff Collins, likens him to Cam Chancellor with the Seahawks. Watch this play. Well, there's Neal. He reads it. He's got his eyes on the quarterback, read quickly, and then a nice form wrap-up tackle for no gain. LSU tried to fool him, sending action to the left and the throw back to the tight end, but Florida in great position to make the play. Once they took Leonard Fournette out, the offense stalled, and now they got to settle for three. This guy hasn't missed yet. This will be a 33-yard attempt for Domang, and it's a fake. The throw to Domang. He bobbles it, and now he heads to the end zone. Touchdown! Seen Les Miles do that before. It was picture perfect. We've seen him do it before against these same Florida Gators. Brad Craigthorpe was the holder, a backup quarterback, and he made the play. Extra point if he's not too excited goes through as well. Give him all seven of those points. We told you the fourth quarter was going to be fun. This is craziness. The kicker caught it three times and from 16 yards out gives the Tigers a touchdown lead. TV takes us inside the drive as we look at the improbable end of that 75 yard drive. Well watch Darrell Williams the running back. This is called design play. Craig Thorpe the backup quarterback is going to put the ball down and raise up and throw it. Williams is out leading the block and Domang the kicker goes from kicking a go ahead field goal to scoring a go ahead touchdown for LSU. 35-28. Ten forty remaining in regulation. Gamble to kick. Let's take you back five years ago. Fake field goal, last second touchdown. Very similar. Here's what it looked like. It's a fake. They pitch it. Can you believe this? There's a pass, same play, and that one is touchdown. Six seconds to go in the game. So the fake wasn't a touchdown, but it was keeping the drive alive to led to that touchdown pass. And Les Miles has pulled another one out of his mad hat. <laughs> and he's up by seven. Now the pressure on Treon Harris and company to answer. Harris throws on the run and throws a strike to Powell and he's got a first down and cut back to the middle of the field to get some extra yardage as we check in with Adnan again. Thanks Adnan. Great game here with 10 20 remaining. Best in the East best in the West for supremacy at the midway point of the Southeastern Conference. Calvin Taylor cuts it outside. Nice gain, good run. 
out to the 42. Let's check in with Holly. Well, guys, it has been a blast watching the reaction of these teammates on the sideline to that kicker and that fake kick. Uh, that fake. He came over to the sideline and he told his teammates, I was bobbling that ball. I didn't know if I could pull it in. I've never been so scared in my life. He is the big time <laughs> hero over here. And guys, if you could see him, he is so little and so thin. It is a huge play for this kicker. Well, with the special teams and the way things yeah. went for them earlier, they were due for something positive to happen. And that one did it to give them the lead. But Florida approaching midfield here with nine and a half to go in the fourth quarter. Blitz coming off the corner. Harris fires quickly, got it to his tight end, but he's short as Jake McGee knocked out at the 49 of LSU. Actually, he was still inbound, so the clock will continue to run. That for Jake is his fifth catch of the night, including a touchdown of 19 yards in the first half. Still think Florida has to find a way, maybe not necessarily on this play, but before this game's over, they got to find a way to get the football to Demarcus Robinson, number 11, and get him involved in their offense. He trots out to the top of your screen here on third down and two. Full backfield right now with Taylor behind Treon Harris. And Kelvin looking for the first down first of all and he got it with second effort I think it looked like he was going to be about a yard and a half shy and he just powered his way to that first down marker he does a nice job of making quick cuts to get into the hole he's stretching this play and he's looking for a crease and at the last minute he plants cuts up gets his shoulders north and south and gets to the fight to the first down yardage of course his dad a great gator and a great NFL player Fred Calvin, they're going to bring the change from the far side to see if indeed he got the first down. I thought he got it by the nose of the ball, but we'll see. Been a tough sled in 25 yards, yeah. I'll tell you that. That was the thing when we talked to Kevin Steele, the defensive coordinator. He said, you know, when you look at the statistics on this guy, he only averages 73 yards a game, 3.9 yards per carry. But he said, he's a much better back than that. Yeah. When you watch him on film, he's much better than that. He fights for that hard yardage. He gets overlooked a little bit because of all the great backs right. in this conference, right. including the guy on the other side who's right now the best. Nick Chubb out with an injury would have been considered right there with Leonard Fournette. Under eight and a half to go. Harris running out of time. Maybe that's a good thing. Running with the ball. Flags down. He got to the 40. Probably going to be a holding. Yep. Flags in the area where you expect a holding call. Personal foul. Hands to the face. Offense. Number 78. That's a 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay first down. That's actually worse. Yeah. David Sharp, the left tackle. There it is right there. The left hand up into the face of Arden Key. They've got the true freshman that they're really high on, Martez Ivy, number 73, in at left guard right now. Trip Thurman over on the right side. You talk about ruling field position. Yeah. It's about the worst thing that could have happened. Well, it's still first down. That's the only silver lining here. So you got a couple downs to make up the ground again. Don't need it all in one play. But an empty backfield. You either think it's a quarterback run or he's going to fire, and he does. And he threw a strike. And it's Demarcus Robinson. And Robinson inside the 25, a flag at the end of the play. But that's the guy Todd's been saying. They got to get it to him. They got it to him. Callaway got a nice block out there too, but the flag was at the end of the play. I'm wondering if they called the flag on Callaway. I thought it was a good block. It's going to be a first down either way, no matter what happens here. So a big gainer on the pass play would have been about 38 yards pickup, but uh, going to take away the penalty. There is no foul for targeting. The hit was in the chest. Yeah. It was a good first block. Down. Good block by Callaway. Shoulder to the chest. We've seen him get a couple nice blocks, but that block picked up about an extra 10 to 12 yards on the catch by Robinson. It was a great block. It was right shoulder right into Ricky Jefferson's right shoulder. 
How about that? We so said that. he don't need it all in one play. They said, <laughs> yeah, okay. we'll go ahead and get it in one play. Yeah, I take it back. <laughs> and it's inside the 25. First down at the 23 yard line. Seven and a half to go in the fourth quarter. Florida trying to tie this thing up. Brandon Powell settles in on a slot to the right side as Treon Harris in trouble again. Going to try to get rid of this one, and he got it over to the sideline. Nobody over there got it over the line of scrimmage. Well, he didn't get outside of the tackle box. There was a receiver somewhat close. He didn't get outside of the tackle box. The ball did cross the line of scrimmage. They just have to determine if somebody was in the area. Intentional grounding. Offense, number three. That's a spot foul, loss of down. Second out. We're going to be right here. See, he never left the pocket. He moved up, moved over a little bit, but when he threw the ball, he wasn't outside the tackle box and clearly throwing the football away. Now, Brandon Powell wasn't close enough over yeah. on that far side. He would have been the nearest receiver. So a 12-yard loss, a loss of down to go with it. Second and 22. Treon Harris has to be thinking, at least get us back into field goal range here, if nothing else. He'll roll the throw. And throws it away. There's seven minutes and seven seconds left in the football game. This isn't going to be the last time you have the football offensively. But you got to try to get yourself in position to get some points on this drive if you can. Your kicking game is yeah. this at best, and I'm Shake shaking my hand best. side to side. I'm not trying to rough up the Florida kickers, but their backup kickers kicking because their frontline guy got hurt earlier, and neither one of them were Mr. Dependability. Third and a whole bunch. And the crowd here letting Treon Harris know it. Calvin Taylor looked like he was still running the to the sideline. Timeout, Florida. And that is their, That's their first, first timeout. timeout. So third and 22 is what we have when we return to Death Valley in a moment. ESPN College Football is presented by Hilton.com where you can book unbeatable prices on 12 unbeatable hotel brands and in part by Nissan premier partner of the Heisman Trophy. You're watching the Dr. Pepper championship drive game of the week and Dr. Pepper couldn't have picked a better one. Fourth quarter number six leads number eight 35 28 and the Gators third down and 22. Harris lets it rip deep man there got it no and he dropped it had it and couldn't hold it Antonio Callaway would have been a touchdown Treon Harris did what you want a guy to do give your guy a chance offensive players usually are better at going up and catching a ball in traffic. He climbs up and gets it, but Dwayne Thomas, number 13, there in coverage to knock it out. So punting tie for Johnny Townsend. He'd love to bury LSU deep in their own territory. Those little flop punts, and he might have done just that. Did they keep it out? Yes, they did. One yard line. Nick Washington. <laughs> That's what you call pinning them. Thirty four yard punt and a beauty. There's the jump ball. It doesn't matter where bodies are the in ball. relation to the end zone. It's just where the ball is. And it never got there. And you can see the official right there watching the ball right here. He's That's watching to make sure it doesn't cross the line of scrimmage or hawking, the goal line. He's hawking that baby, isn't he? he? Is. <laughs> I'm going to miss that one. <clears throat> it is actually inside the one. 
Les Miles perfect when he's got over 100 and they have under 100. Well, both things are happening, but still a precarious spot they're in down at their own goal line. And Brandon Harris just tries to get what he can. We'll check in with Adnan again. Number four playing. Here's number six and number eight in a battle with 619 and the clock running at Tiger Stadium. Leonard Fournette deep in his own end zone. Will get the call. Puts his head down and goes straight ahead across the five to about the seven. Big, big, big third down coming up here. Florida's got to have a stop. Third and four. I would imagine Jeff Collins, the defensive coordinator, is anticipating run here. Even though Brandon Harris has been good tonight, he's been good with his decision making. This part of the field, I would anticipate run with Leonard Fournette. You would anticipate correctly, sir. And he broke off it. First down. Throwing guys out of their way with that stiff arm with the left hand, and he's got a first down at the 19 yard line. The one game that Florida did not play well against the run, Tennessee, is because they didn't tackle well. They have him stopped short of the first down, but they don't wrap up. And it is very dangerous if you don't wrap this guy up. It's not enough to just come up and hit him. You've got to grab cloth and you got to get other people there to get him on the ground. And he just said to Marcus May at the end of the run, get off me, please. First down at the 20. He's moved to the number nine spot in career rushing at LSU with that last. <laughs> I don't know if that was a carrier, a train wreck. This time, Florida's equal to the task, dropping for a loss. When they lost or played Tennessee, they won, but they had to come back and score two touchdowns in the fourth quarter. They gave up 254 yards rushing. Every other game, they averaged giving up 71 yards a game. Tonight, 213 yards rushing for LSU. Florida. Florida uses its second timeout with 438 remaining. See the difference now, they got the negative yardage play to try to get this stop. Mentioned my friend Jim Hawthorne after 30 years as voice of the Tigers is hanging it up after this season. You think he was excited on that last call on the fake field goal? Check it out. And then, oh, it's a fake. They're going to throw it over to Dolang, and he's going to try to run it in, and he's going to run it in for the score. Holy cow. <laughs> 71 years young. He said, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to hang out with my best friend, my wife, Carol, do a little traveling, visit friends. He's been a great one. One of the all-time great voices in SEC football. We've had a lot of them. Second down, 13. 442 remaining in Florida's only got one timeout left. Leonard Fournette drags a couple of guys, including Brian Cox Jr. with him across the 20 yard line. Now this is to play the ball game right here for the Florida defense. They got the negative yardage play. They brought up a third and long. They get a stop here. They'll still get pretty good field position for their offense. With four minutes and some change left in the football game. In the first half, Brandon Harris, big plays in the passing game, probably surpassed what the running game did. You let him rip one here at third and eight. I think you throw it for sure. Here it comes. And it's a little bit short, incomplete. Trying to get it to Doral again, his favorite target, but it is fourth down. So they got the stop they needed, the Gators. That was a long throw from the right hash thrown to the left sideline, and Jalen Tabor in good position on coverage. J. 
Jamie Keene to punt. Remember Antonio Callaway already housed one tonight from 72 yards and he's standing at his 45 yard line. This one's going to go out of bounds. Looks like inside the 40 pretty good field position 38 yard line. So that's where Florida goes to work. They still got 347 to go and one time out remaining. Don't forget get your NFL Sunday started. Now the insiders tomorrow as we start week six in the NFL news fantasy updates early breaking stories at 10 then at 11. Boomer and the guys Sunday NFL countdown at 11. It all starts 10 o'clock Eastern time tomorrow morning on ESPN. Brad Nessler, Tom Blackledge, Holly Road, our ESPN crew and a thrilling matchup of top tens here in Baton Rouge. 347 left. Gators need a touchdown to tie. They've got one timeout remaining. LSU's going to call a timeout here. Second charge timeout, LSU. That's both, a 30 second timeout. Both teams only have one remaining. Demarcus Robinson had the big play on the last drive. Brandon Powell's been pretty quiet. Callaway, the freshman receiver, as far as the guys that have really sparked tonight for the passing game of Florida. And then Jake McGee, their tight end, also has a touchdown catch and five receptions on the Knights. Here's the SEC as it looks right now. Somebody is going to be defeated here before we finish things in Death Valley. Alabama moved up a notch. Texas A&M moved down a notch with the Tides win over the Aggies. Ole Miss got kind of roughed up by Memphis today to be quite honest with you. Score got a little bit closer at the end but Memphis played a great game and they're undefeated. Yeah. Georgia the last report was tied with Missouri at six I think in the fourth quarter in a low scoring event and Georgia if they win that game beat Missouri and then beat Florida and Jacksonville there could be back in the hunt in the east but that's not the point right now. Dreon Harris empty backfield that's McGee the tight end in motion. Gonna go deep overshot everybody was intended for Demarcus Robinson. I like the idea of throwing on first down. However, when they're covered like that and you don't dump it off and you bring up second and 10, that, that's difficult as an offense. You look downfield, you look for the deep throw. If it's not there, you got to find somewhere to dump off the football. That time Robinson was well covered down the field. Harris on second and ten does throw short one hop that somebody got a hand at it I think intended for McGee appears that it got tipped to the line and it's third and ten good pressure on the inside Godshaw number fifty seven with pressure and Arden key number forty nine both guys pressing the pocket might have gotten the finger on it yep didn't have enough on it either way third and ten. New defensive line coach Ed Orgeron for this LSU defense. One of the most animated guys in college football. I'm sure screaming right now. If his voice is still <laughs> with him. Harris waits and waits and goes short and that again thrown behind Antonio Callaway. Well he just kind of short armed it too. You know this is one where he had a guy on the crossing route. He had Callaway. Just go ahead and throw it. Don't try to aim it. Don't try to guide it in there. Just throw it. Well, right now, Jim Agawain's going with only one timeout remaining. I'm not going to get the ball back, probably. They're going for it on fourth yeah. and ten. We have only missed once all year. They're two for two tonight. This is the ball game right here. Fourth down and ten. Florida at its own 38 yard line. You'll know in a moment if they get it or not. They didn't. Deion Jones makes the play defensively. 
Boy, what a quick athletic move by Deion Jones. As Callaway breaks inside, he's going to break inside. Watch Deion Jones turn his hips and change directions and get a hand on the football. That's an athletic play by a linebacker in coverage on a wide receiver. As good as he was for most of the game, Todd, that's his sixth straight incompletion. Yep. And now LSU takes over at the 38-yard line. Florida can only stop it with one timeout remaining. And they, by the way, have the best back in the country about eight yards deep behind their quarterback. This is Leonard Fournette to ice it time. Here he comes. Tough yard, man. Garrett Davis met him in the hole, didn't get him down, but knocked him back. The clock will work its way down into three minutes. We start to look at this game, and as LSU survives it here at home, I'm not sure either one of these teams has to move very far in the national rankings. Uh, Florida's going to dip a little bit, but yeah. you come in here and play LSU this tough, shouldn't lose much. Second down and eight. Whoa, the ball's on the ground, covered. Brandon Harris, that's the one thing that could have turned things around in Florida's favor. Well, I think that was Caleb Brantley, number 57, who guessed on the snap count and almost blew the play up in the backfield. Caleb Brantley, number 57, is going to guess on the snap count, and it's a bad snap. Ethan Posick, the center. Got a little jumpy in there. It was a bad snap, and Brandon Harris alertly falls on the football, but that could have been disastrous for LSU right and there. Now Florida takes his final timeout, and it's going to be third down and 11 on the next snap. Don't forget Monday Night Football NFC East battle coming up week six. First place Giants led by Eli Manning against the Eagles. Coverage starts with Monday Night Countdown at six. Also streaming live on Watch ESPN. Well, now on third down and 11, if they throw and it's incomplete, the clock stops. Yeah. Florida would love to have one more timeout right here. Yeah, you're not kidding. And, and really, the whole game, they've had to burn timeouts, yeah. you know, just for lack of communication or mix-ups in formation. None of their timeouts used have been, you know, other than this last one, strategically. I think LSU will run the football here and, and try to run as much clock off as they can. Fournette trots out there. He's got another 176 yards in a quiet night running the football. He'll carry it again. Reverses his field. Looking for a block from his quarterback. Cuts it back up, and he got to the 30-yard line, or the 35, I should say. Now LSU will just let the play clock go all the way down before fourth down. And then try to punt and bury Florida down inside the five-yard line. But they'll let this clock, the 24 seconds, run all the way off and try to leave Florida with as little time as possible and, and the worst field position possible on this punt. As we worked it under two minutes. Unless they take their last time out, they'll just let the clock run out, take the penalty, and then punt it. And that's what they're going to do. Delay a game. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Fourth down. So now Jamie Keen, one of the captains tonight, special team captain, the putter, just wants to make this as miserable as possible for the Gators on where they start their offensive set. Well, after watching a game earlier today, I would say if you're Jamie <laughs> Keen, make sure you catch oh. this snap first and foremost. No kidding. And then try to keep it out of that guy's hands without making him make a fair catch. He made the grab, end over end kick, bounces out, so bounces at the 10 yard line. So he did do a good job. They're 90 yards away with no timeouts and 93 seconds to work with. 
Don't forget after Arizona State and Utah which is going on right now you can keep it locked to Sports Center at night for a full breakdown of the entire day in college football. We'll also have highlights and post game coverage from the Jays and the Royals and the Cubs and the Mets and the baseball playoffs. Sports Center at night it's after Arizona State and Utah on ESPN. Well, the key is this first down play for Treon Harris. The last time they had the ball he threw incomplete kind of wasted a play brought up second and ten. No timeouts but with a minute thirty three still a lot of time because if you get first downs or get out of bounds the clock stops and you got a chance to reset. You're trying to cut a hook and ladder or something like that down here is it too dangerous at your own ten. I don't think you need to do that yet. Powell. Harris is waiting too long. That's the last thing you yeah. want to have happen. And Lewis Neal's got his third sack of the night. Yeah, that's the absolute worst thing that can happen to you. And it's only a three man rush for LSU. He's just been too much to handle off that edge tonight. 92's had a great game. LSU rushing three, dropping eight. Going to try to force Treon Harris to throw underneath. Got to make a decision. The throw is just to Kelvin Taylor, and he's not back to the original line of scrimmage. And the clock is under a minute. Florida's got a hustle, no way to stop it. They've got to get out to the 20 just to move the chains. They don't look very organized, and I don't say I can blame them because this is a tough spot to play without timeouts and the crowd going crazy. Harris in his own end zone. Fires long on the run. It is caught wow. by Callaway. Well, remember, Callaway is the one who had a chance to make the catch in the end zone and it got knocked out. Again, sometimes you don't worry if a guy's open or not. Throw it up there, give your guy a chance to make a play. Offensive players are better at adjusting to the ball, typically, than defensive players. At the 49, still life for the Gators. Harris going to go deep on the sideline, and this one's out of bounds. Jake McGee, the tight end, was the intended receiver. 20 seconds remaining. Now they'd like to get about 25 here and then give him a legitimate yeah. shot to try to hang one to the end zone again. They might have three plays left. They have no way to stop it other than out of bounds or a first down. Well there's 20 seconds left in the game and substitution wise they just took Callaway and Demarcus Robinson out of the game. So two of their best receivers are not even on the field for this play. That means Powell would be the go. Harris can't get sacked or it's going to be over. Incomplete. It was McGee the intended receiver. And now there's 13 seconds remaining. Well and this is this is a game and a tape that Treon Harris will learn from because he's taken too much time on some of these plays. He's got to understand what he needs to do to get himself in a position to throw it to the end zone. LSU very content to rush three drop eight and keep everything in front of them. The only thing they can't do right now is let somebody get behind them. Three wide outs to the top and one to the bottom here. Maybe two plays left Harris again taking all kinds of time fires as far as he can broken up by John Battle and now we got one play left. See the problem because Treon Harris didn't complete any passes to get beyond the 50 he can throw it as hard as he wants now and it's not going to get to the end zone. I mean that that's the problem for Florida right now. Kevin Steele can put about seven guys back at the 10 yard line right yeah. now if he wants to. I mean you can call your Hail Mary play but you're not going to be able to get the ball to the end zone from the throw and interference would help a little bit. That might be the only thing to hang your hat on right now. Final play barring a marker. Harris runs up time has expired still moving around trying to find a place to let fly. Here it comes as far as he can put it up there and it's out of bounds and LSU is wanted at home to stay perfect.
It lived up to the billing of the best in the East and the best in the West, but the West came out on top. 35 to 28. Let's check in with Holly. Well, Coach, this was a tie ball game. It was fourth and long. Why was that the moment to go for that fake field goal? We had it, and it was an opportunity for us to get seven, and seven's a whole lot more than three. What was going through your mind as your kicker was bobbling that ball, trying to reel it in? I, I well, you know, I had some uh, some unusual reactions. I just, I wanted to see it. He's caught it perfectly all week. Has this been something you had in all week, Coach? Yeah, yeah, it was something we put in just for them. These games with the Gators always seem to be dramatic. What was this like for you tonight? Well, Jim's done a great job with them. I mean, they're a very good football team. And you know, our guys played lights out. I mean, you back into the game, throwing for the end zone. That's a Florida Gator LSU contest. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Another one of those. Great game by that young fella. LSU still unbeaten, 6-0, 4 in conference play. For Todd Blackwich, Holly Rowe, Brad Nessler saying so long from Baton Rouge. Mark Jones and the crew in Salt Lake City for Arizona State and Utah. Jonesy, it's all yours.